Hello, Linda from Baladi's Body Blitz here. Minnie's not in the studio today, but don't worry, she'll be back very soon. Today we're going to be doing a train and talk total body workout just using some light weights and your body weight. It is a train and talk, so I'm going to be chatting to you about various exercise and health and fitness related topics. So if you prefer to use the non-talking version of this, which will be a music only version, then make sure you choose that one in the YouTube titles. So today we're going to be doing 60 second intervals. Every 60 seconds the exercise will change. There's not going to be any breaks in between. You go at your own pace. I'm going to be going at a moderate pace today. It's not going to be an overly strenuous workout, but there's gonna be plenty of reps seeing it's 60 seconds per exercise. So let's get straight into it with a little warm up. I am going to use my weights from the get go. I'm gonna press start on my timer, come into the center and all we're going to do is reach with a side lunge. So I want you to hinge from your hips and I want you to reach towards your toes and the back arm is doing a triceps extension. The front arm is reaching down but then rowing behind. So row and then extend that tricep. Trying to make sure your back is flat here and you're getting as low as you can into those squats either side so that you're really starting to feel your lower body heating up. And I also want to apologize in advance if the lighting in here goes from light to dark to light to dark. This studio is natural lighting and it's good when it's either fully overcast or fully clear. But when it's cloudy with bits of sunshine, it can get a little bit frustrating to get the camera lighting right. So, sorry in advance. Okay, we're going to come into a wide plie position and start doing little biceps curls while we're doing a nice wide squat. Deep breaths in here. So today, while we train, I want to talk to you about the idea of being intuitive when it comes to what you're eating as well as what exercise you're doing. Because so many of us, we want a certain goal or we have a certain goal in mind and then we think we need to be really strict and to control everything to achieve that goal. And in some cases, you do achieve the goal by being really strict, having an exercise and a diet plan. But often, once you achieve that goal, you find that it's very difficult to maintain that either fat loss or let's just go two steps across with side lateral raises. So either maintaining the fat loss or maybe the muscle gain can be difficult because the fact is that life is not linear. It's not something that you can predict. Life can be all over the place at times. It definitely can throw you some curveballs. And sometimes we just cannot continue on with a certain strict way of eating or exercising for a long period of time. So you may be able to do it for six weeks, lose a bunch of fat, but then things happen and it's not so easy. And if you go back to old habits, you end up putting it all back on and sometimes a little bit more. And that whole yo-yo dieting, let's go again hammer, sorry, biceps curls this time with a heel in front. And that whole yo-yo dieting can really ruin your metabolism and also just deflate you psychologically because you feel like you haven't got a handle on where you want to be in life when it comes to your exercise and your eating habits or just healthy lifestyle habits in general. So I find that if you are able to become more intuitive with the way you eat rather than sticking to something really strict, then you are able to slowly create those healthy habits and know what your body needs to just overall increase your health, optimize your health. And then as a result of that, you will get that 
fat loss. Now let's go a step behind and a tricep kick back, slightly hinge forward. So tapping behind, it's not a lunge, it's a tap. Keeping that hinged forward position with a flat back. So what do I actually mean by intuitive eating or intuitively choosing your exercise? Well, it basically means that you learn to listen to your body. And a lot of people would kind of think, what does that actually mean, listen to your body? It sounds kind of airy-fairy. <laughs> but basically, if you are able to check in with your body, and realize when you are in a peaceful state versus a dysregulated state or a stress state, then slowly, let's just row behind. So you're in a narrow squat position and it's a faster row up, squeezing your shoulder blades together. So this one's gonna get your heart rate up a bit. It's a little pulse through those legs too. So when we are in a stress state, let's just call it stressed, you usually have symptoms that go along with that. It might be shallower breathing or quick breathing. It might be feeling a bit anxious. It might even be starting to sweat a little bit or your heart racing a little bit. There are actually many symptoms and everyone's slightly different. But if you start to just take note of how your body reacts when you're in a stress state, then you can learn to see those symptoms and to start regulating yourself again. Okay, we're just gonna do arms in front. So just stand in a nice neutral position. Long lever, switching your arms in that front raise. This one's gonna add up fast. If you need to, bend your arms more here, <sighs> breathing. So once you're able to notice when your body is in a stress state and start to find ways of calming yourself down, then you will also notice when your body is in a peaceful state, right? When you're feeling relaxed, when you're feeling happy, when your heart rate is lowered, when your breathing is nice and slow and deep. This is starting to really burn my shoulders, but we're gonna keep going. Three, two, one, oh my goodness. Okay, let's rotate to the back for a little bit. Not that it's any easier with these weights. We're gonna change directions in a minute. So we're just gonna burn out our arms a little bit, and then we're gonna head on down towards the lower body and end up with core. So. Bear with the arm section. Okay, start going to the front now, Oof, up and around. So I want you to brace your core here. Keep your neck nice and long, your shoulders down and back and just circle. Circle, just a few more, three, two, one. And now do one at a time to the back. One at a time, big circles. So the reason why I say it's important to know what's happening with your nervous system is because when you're in a stress state, your body is not worrying about weight loss at all, okay? So let's go down and let's go pump, two, three, four, pump, two, three, four. So a little squat, two, three, four, then up, two, three, four. Hammer curls three, four, up, three, four, one more, hammer curl, three, four, and up, two, three, four, now normal bicep curl. So this one's gonna be harder, two, three, four, down, and up. Sit right back, butt to the back, and up, keep going, down. And up, I took those pulses out because I find that it swings too much if you're kind of pulsing at the same time as trying to do regular bicep curls at such a fast pace. And up, and last time, down, and up. Nice job. 
We're going to do shoulder press up, down, up, down, one, two, three, four. So two up with both arms and then split it, three, four. Now, when I'm doing these ones that have multiple kind of rep patterns, it's hard for me to talk at the same time. So you kind of get a little bit of a break from me talking, but we're going to switch it up after this one. So go one more and one, two, three, four. Now just single up with palms facing. So when you are in a dysregulated state or a stressed state, your body's not interested in losing fat. All it's interested in is surviving. So in order to be able to lose fat, you have to be in a calm state, in a peaceful state. So that means being able to listen to your nervous system and regulate it is the number one thing you need to focus on. Let's just go out and in, push up, out and in, push up. So I'm pushing up at a diagonal. So that's, it's actually the number one thing you need to focus on if you want to lose fat. So going back to the regulation, once you're able to keep yourself in a peaceful state for longer periods of time by learning to calm yourself down when you are in that activated nervous system state, then you're giving your body the ability to be in that relaxed state to heal, number one, everything in your body that needs healing and also then to be able to start using fat as fuel, which is a more difficult process than using glucose as fuel. So if you wanna get rid of that fat, let's go side up, side up. If you wanna use that fat, you're gonna to have to be in that more relaxed nervous system state. Now, once you're able to be more relaxed more often and let's be realistic it's not going to happen overnight and it's not you're not always going to be in a relaxed state because sometimes life is stressful a lot of the time actually then you can trust yourself more and what i mean by that is you can trust your intuition more you can trust that you can hear what your body actually needs and i'm sure all of us have had the experience that there are times when we just crave certain foods and it may be something really random like broccoli or salmon some sort of fatty fish let's drop the weights for a bit and we're going to start doing lunges to the back and i want them to be quite deep you can hold on to the weights if you want but we're going to head more into lower body now so if you really want to keep it at a more moderate intensity, you don't need to use the weights. I just want you to step back, getting your knee down, but still kind of hinging slightly forward. Deep breaths, and you do not have to go as far as fast as me. And you may be wobbling here, which is fine. Wobbling is a good thing. Back and in back and in. So we're going to do a bunch of lunges and squats to really get into the lower body. A few more like this. Three, two, and one. Now turn out and we're going to go down and tap. We're staying on one side. Down and tap. So it's a curtsy lunge, a turn out position lunge. If you prefer to really send that weight into the glutes, then hinge right forward, tap the floor each time to show that you're going that low with a flat back. Weight is in the heel of the front leg. So yeah, it's really important to be able to trust yourself. And an example that I recently heard, which I thought was really good, is say for example you're at a buffet and there's 50 different foods to choose from. The desire that wells up in you to eat one food as opposed to another food, that's pretty much just your body deciding what it wants to eat, right? 
Now let's go to the other side. So why is it then that we find it so hard to make decisions about what we want to eat or what we want to exercise or any other decision in life when it's quite easy, it might take us a few seconds to choose what we want to eat at a buffet, but when it comes to following a lifestyle habit, like just healthy eating, we can get so overwhelmed and not trust the decisions that we make at times. So really, that must just be a psychological block, right? Because if we are able to make decisions quite quickly at certain times, then it's just not believing that we will make the right decision that often causes us to have that blockage and then to feel so overwhelmed and not make a decision at all, or maybe second guess ourselves. If you want to use words here, you can. Let's just come into Y plie. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you are in a more regulated state, a peaceful state, and you can hear your inner voice more easily, then you would be able to stand in front of the fridge or the pantry or in your kitchen and make a decision about what your body really needs and wants to eat on a daily basis, just like you would if you were at a buffet. And some days you might feel and I'm talking about really listening and I'm not talking about listening to addictions, okay? Like that's a kind of different thing. Your addiction will sometimes scream, eat the cookie or eat the cake or eat the chocolate. But if you really quieten your nervous system and you get into that, let's go into a regular squat and I'm just using my weights for a little bit of extra intensity. You don't even need to. We're really sitting our glutes back and down, back and down. So, yeah, I wanted to stipulate that addictions are not the same as listening to your true inner voice. When you're in a state of heightened emotion that causes you to crave certain addictive foods, you are not in a calm, peaceful nervous system state. And that's why it's so important to learn when your nervous system is activated or stressed or anxious in some way. Because let's face it, when you're about to go and eat the cake or you feel like this overwhelming feeling to eat the cake or whatever it is that food that is actually not good for you, let's stay on one side, go lunge and in, curtsy and in. So stay on one side, directly back and diagonal. So when you feel that calling to the pantry to eat the junk, there is this kind of, the addiction causes almost like a dopamine hit, right? That sometimes increases your heart rate, makes you feel a bit anxious. It's not the same feeling as if you are in a really calm state and deciding to eat something healthy, right? Or deciding to eat something that your body really wants that's nourishing. And I'm not saying that you can't sometimes eat a piece of dark chocolate or eat the carbs or whatever it is, because sometimes your body is asking for that. But I'm saying, make sure you learn how to read your nervous system, switch sides, so that you know when you're activated and you know when you're peaceful. And make decisions about food or about exercise, what you're gonna work out or whatever it is that you're trying to make a decision about, make it when you're in a peaceful state, not in a stressed state. Because then you can trust yourself to make wiser decisions, more intuitive decisions. Okay, so, then you can not have a strict diet plan that you follow, but you can literally each day stand in your kitchen, decide, am I hungry? And then ask your body, what do I feel like eating? And so many times it will happen that you reach for 
the nutritious food simply because, let's stay on one side with side lunges, simply because that's what your body is asking for and when you are calm enough to listen to your inner voice, you will hear that. Now, this listening to your body takes practice. It's not something that you can do overnight and there's probably gonna be many times that you end up eating the wrong type of foods. But it's a work in progress. And you may ask, so in the meantime, while I am practicing, hearing my inner voice, how do I stop myself from eating all the junk, some of the time, and still progress in losing fat? And that is something that I can definitely help you with. Let's just finish these side lunges. Okay, other side. Down. Keep a flat back, tummies are in, and send that glute towards the back. Really bend into this moving leg. So what you can do, which is pretty much a foolproof way of helping your body out when it comes to regulating your nervous system, as well as helping you to lose fat, is something I have learned over the last couple of years and have implemented probably for the last year and it's intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is not as scary as you may think. It literally is just elongating your non-eating window. So all it means is eating your dinner slightly earlier and then not eating after dinner and then eating your breakfast slightly later. So we're gonna do some standing abs we're gonna stay on one side and just bring the knee up. So if you usually eat dinner at eight o'clock at night, try to slowly, and I'm talking about slowly, I'm not talking about a big shock to the system, slowly bring it back to maybe 7.30, 7.15, seven o'clock. The earlier the better, obviously, because it also helps with sleep sleeping another massive factor to being in that relaxed state because your body heals during sleep. So if you're able to bring your dinner to an earlier time and then slowly, once again, and you don't have to do them at the same time, start to push your breakfast down the track a little bit. So if you usually have breakfast at seven, maybe 7.30, 8, 8.30, other side. Then you're increasing the gap in between eating, right? Using sleep as the predominant time that you're not eating. So it's actually much easier, right? Because we all sleep. So try to lengthen that window more and more. And if you can get it to around 13 hours, 15 hours even, that is great. That's literally all you need. There's a lot of people that say, you need to have these massive 16 to 20 hour gaps, one meal a day. It's not necessary, especially for women because hormones play a huge part in fat loss. And if you have that eating window too short, it actually stuffs up your hormones speaking from experience. So come down into a seated position. Don't worry if you lose any reps here. So bring your legs in front and all we're gonna do is side to side, push your weights together. Now you don't have to do this with weights. You can just go like this. We're rotating through the waistline. So just increasing your non-eating window, decreasing your eating window, will give your body that extra time it needs to eliminate toxins, to, get, to start healing more, because it will give it more time where it's not digesting, and to help your body to be less stressed in general. So there are so many benefits to fasting. I'm not going to go into them all here because I have 
made another video about intermittent fasting. I'm going to come down, no weights, and all I'm going to do is a bicycle. So elbow to knee and extend. And if you don't want to extend your legs fully, just come up like this. So yeah, if you want to go watch my intermittent fasting video, that has a lot more information in it in detail. But basically, intermittent fasting, and then the other thing in conjunction with that is watching your glucose spikes. So I follow someone on Instagram called The Glucose Goddess, and I totally love her because she's really realistic about still being able to eat sugar, still being able to eat carbs, and using specific hacks that have been proven to help keep your blood sugar from spiking. Now, I am not going to go into, once again, a huge amount of detail of why it's so important not to have blood sugar spike. Come in and in, so either float the leg and come in, or just one leg at a time towards your chest. In and in. If this is too much, lay back down and just do it without the upper body up. I'm trying not to put too much weight on my hands. I'm really trying to extend those legs. We're coming towards the last few rounds and that's the reason why I'm starting to pick up the intensity a bit because I want to get all of our body involved here. This is tough guys, just breathe through it. So yeah, I'm not going to explain fully why glucose is something that is so important when it comes to fat loss because I have done other walk and talks on that subject. But just trust me, glucose is the thing that's going to help you. Okay, we're going to come up and reach. If you can't do this, then just come up. If you can't even do that, just do crunches. Okay, but if you can, come up and reach towards that leg and then back down. And you can slow it down if this is too fast. So keeping glucose stable helps with stress and helps with the amount of insulin that is in your body. And let's just say really quickly, when there's too much insulin in your bloodstream, it stops you from using fat as fuel, okay? So if you're able to maintain your blood glucose levels more evenly without having massive spikes, it will help in so many ways. I have another video on YouTube that is all about, let's put our hands underneath our butt and just come up and tap. So up towards the ceiling and tap. If you want your upper body involved, hands behind your head and just lift your shoulders. Otherwise, hands wherever you prefer. I'm poking my feet up to the ceiling using my lower abs. I have another video on YouTube, which is all about maintaining energy levels. And the main topic about that is to do with glucose and how to stop the spikes. But if you go to the glucose goddess on Instagram, she has got so many great hacks to keep your blood glucose levels stable. Some of them being having vegetables before your meal, having a bit of vinegar before your meal. So before you eat sugar, sorry, before you eat carbs. Dressing your carbs, so not just having them by itself, but adding fat or protein to them. Now, because we're nearly done, we're gonna get harder. Like a star, come up and reach. So bo both arms and legs wide, up and reach. If you can't do this, then once again, maybe here with your legs bent, or just bring your legs up and switch them like this, okay? Otherwise, come with me. Second to last interval, up and reach. Yeah, so carbs, dressing your carbs, walking after you eat a lot of sugar, or doing some form of exercise helps to drive that sugar into your muscles. There's many little hacks you can do which allow you to still eat your favorite foods and help you to lose weight. So they are little hacks that will help you to 
stay on track while you are learning to be more intuitive with your body. I'm going to come onto my belly and the last thing we're going to do is flutter kick. So bring your arms down, your neck is nice and long looking at the mat and kick your legs, flutter kicks. <sighs> flutter kicks and then we're going to put our legs down at the halfway point and just flutter our upper body. So intermittent fasting, watching your glucose levels is something that will help you get on track and get into that optimal health nervous system state where, sorry, arms now, where you can start to really hear your inner voice without constantly being stressed, without constantly being anxious, deep breaths, and then make better decisions in life in general. It all comes down to learning to know what your body needs and trusting yourself to make wise decisions. And that is it. We have finished. Let's just come up and stretch a little bit. So if you have questions about any of that, you can find the YouTube video and comment underneath and I will come and answer those questions as quickly as I can. While we're here, just pull your heel into your butt and slightly lift the thigh. So we're stretching the quad. And let's do the other side. So that was a total body workout, 30 minutes working arms, legs, um, core while we were standing, cardio for sure, and core on the mat. And we definitely um, got a bit of a calorie burn there and the heart rate up. So I would say it was pretty successful, right? And I felt like it flew by. So I find that the talking side of things definitely engages your mind to the point where you're still working your body, but you kind of um, lose track of time a bit, right? So I hope it was good information. And any time that you guys have a topic that you want me to talk about, just put it in the comments below and I will definitely try to talk about those things for you guys because I know there are a lot of questions when it comes to exercise and eating and just healthy living in general and I think the more that we have information available the more empowered we feel to make those healthy choices reach overhead side to side and I'm just basically speaking from my own experience from the things that I have learned from the things I've tried on myself I know everyone is an individual and maybe the fasting won't work for everyone, maybe there's certain health, health conditions, maybe um, using those glucose hacks won't work for everyone, although I'm not really convinced of that. I think that is something that would work for most people, maybe not people with diabetes perhaps. I'm not sure how it works in that case, but they're just general healthy practices that will give your body that ability to kind of heal and look after itself better, which will then obviously help you to be in a less stressed state overall, which can only be good for your health, right? So I hope that it helped in some way and I look forward to training and talking with you again very soon. Bye for now.